we kicking out 2024 with a video breakdown of 21 Savage Red Rum video. Before I get started, is it just me or is 21 Savage like the most unenthusiastic rapper ever? He raps with absolutely no energy. Let me know in the comments down below. For the first effect, we're going to start off easy. We're going to use the paper rip effects from Cinepacks. You can use the link in the description down below. This pack here is free. All you got to do is add it to cart and check out. The one I'm going to use for this demonstration will be RIP 10. So I'm going to take it and place it on top of my clips. I'm going to shorten these down to, make, to even them all up. And this effect can be done right from the edit page. Now I'm going to effects and type in 3D keyer. I'm going to place that on the paper rip clip. I'm going to go over to my second viewer. And the drop down is by default set to transform. Hit this drop down arrow and change it to open effects, which is where you find a 3D keyer in open effects under effects. Now I'm going to the inspector tab and I want to select the blue. So I'm going to actually play this clip a little bit to the blue part. Then I'm going to take select the ink dropper and select the blue. Of course, now if you play this all the way out, you'll see the little paper rip effect. So right here, you see a little bit of the blue line. So now I'm going to turn this D spill up here in the inspector tab so I don't see it anymore. I'm going to stroll up on my mouse wheel. A lot of times you have to turn it to max. So right now it's kind of turning green. So I'm gonna turn it back down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go down here to match finesse. Hit the drop down, turn on the clean blacks. And now you see it's pretty much gone. If I scroll back out, now we have a clean effect. So now I'm gonna take these two clips. I'm gonna select both of them. And I'm gonna right click and select new compound clip. Hit create. And then I'm gonna repeat the process with the compound clip. So take the 3D here once again. Drop it on your clip, go over to the inspector tab, select the ink dropper, click on the green. You're gonna turn up the D spill. And try to get rid of the little green edges. So turn it all the way up, and you're pretty much good to go. If you need, if you need any more adjustments, just make sure you go down to matte finesse, turn up the clean blacks or your clean whites. You also can do blur radius. You can add a little bit of blur to the edges. For the next one, I'm gonna make a copy of my second clip. I'm gonna hold onto the keyboard, move up, trade that copy, and then move it over my first clip. I wanna freeze frame this first frame here, so I'm gonna select the clip and then hit Shift R. It's gonna create a freeze frame. And basically, we're gonna mask this out. So I'm gonna click on Fusion. I'm gonna grab the Polygon node. It's gonna automatically connect itself to my Media One. So then I'm gonna hit Invert so I can see my subject and then mask them out. Once you're done masking, just make sure you connect the last point to the original point. Go back over to the inspector tab, hit invert, and then bring back in your subject. If you double click here down in the grid, it'll get rid of the mask around the edges and then add a soft edge, kind of blur it a little bit. And in my case, I didn't do that great of a job. So you just have a lot of white here. You can actually turn down a border width to help get rid of some of that. Now back on the edit page. Now as my clip plays, the subject that I masked out will just pop in. And then I want to bring in the background. So I'm actually going to select this clip, hold Alt, bring it down to make a copy. I'm going to right click, open in Fusion. I'm going to go back and select this polygon node and just detach it. And then I'm going to grab a rectangle node and connect it to my media one. I'm gonna resize it to fit the frame. I'm gonna go to the first frame of the clip and select the center mask, and then I'm gonna move it down. Then I move about to frame four or five and basically just wanna place where I wanted it. And the reason I'm going by frame by frame instead of just selecting the end frame and animating it in between, because I wanna create like a stutter step. So I'm gonna select where I want the mask to be at. So I'm gonna leave it about right here. Well, move about right here for frame seven. In this last frame, of course, I want it to be back in its original spot. So now I'm going to right click on center and select set to default. Then I'm going to my spline tab, select that rectangle, and hit zoom to fit. I'm going uh, to select all my keyframes, and then I'm going to go here and select the step in. So that gives it kind of a little stutter step as it plays in. Then, of course, remember, cut on motion blur, go into settings, motion blur. I'm going to leave it set to default at 2 and 180. So now we're back on the edit page. 
I don't want this to come in the exact same time as my main subject, so I'm going to move this back a little bit. So that way the subject come in first, then the background animate in. Now, since these are still frames, I can stretch them out as long as I want to. So then I'm going to select this, stretch it out a little bit past the actual background effect. And I stretch this out just a little bit too. That way it come in. That way the subject comes in, the background comes in, then the background goes away. The subject is there for a little second. And then it goes away. Now we got to recreate that kind of camera shake. So now to recreate the shake, I'm going to take my first clip, right click and open Infusion. With the medium one select, I'm just going to grab a transform node. Over in the Spectre tab, I'm going to right click on Center X, select Modify With, and I'm going to Modify With Shake. The Modifier tab will open up. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to hold Control on my keyboard and scroll out with my mouse wheel. And this green box here indicates where the subject is, which is basically completely out the frame. So now I'm going to move down my minimum and my maximum to more or less try to line them up with one another. Then I'm going to turn down the smoothness and I'm going to turn up the maximum just a little bit because if you haven't set it exactly the same, it won't move. So I'm going to select this and turn it down just a little bit more. That way it's not shaking too crazy. Now I'm going to select this transform node, hit control C, go back to the edit page. Select the bottom clip, right click, open Infusion, hit Control V or Command V, and Command C if you're on Mac. Hold Shift on my keyboard, take the transform node, and add it to the node flow. And it's gonna have the exact same shake. So I go back to my edit page. Now this next effect is a match cut. So I have a couple of clips, there's some stock footage where the face is, where the person is looking directly at the camera to try to do a match cut as, as best as possible. I'm gonna take one of the textures from my mixed media pack. I'm gonna place it on top of this clip and I'm gonna resize it by zooming in. I'm gonna change the composite mode to screen. Then I'm gonna select these two clips and right click, new compound clip. And I'm gonna repeat that for my next three clips. Now each one of my clip has a paper texture over it. So if I go through and hit D to disable, so each one of them has the same paper texture. Now to create the effect, I'm just gonna let my clip, first clip play for a little while. It's about right here. I'll select the clip, I'll split the clip. Then I'll take the back half and go into Fusion. With the medium one selected, I'll select a polygon node, which everything should go blank. I'll select Invert and the Inspector tab. And then I'll just draw a mask along this little white line here. and just leave it as that, and then go back into the edit page. And so now back in the edit page, this clip is masked out. So as it plays, you'll see my original clip. Then that second clip will come in. Then after a while, I'll select the clip, split the clip, and then I'll probably just disable the rest of this. So then it's only showing the second clip. Let it play a little bit, split the clip again, and repeat the process. So I go in here, and then I'll probably just draw a mask. Select the polygon node, invert. I'll draw a mask along this line. Hit back to the edit page. So now as it played through, you see her, then it cut through, then the next clip cut through. Then once again, I'll go through, select my clip, hit D to disable, and then get that full clip, play a little bit further, and repeat the process. Now once I have all my different cuts, I'm basically gonna select everything here. I have a keyboard shortcut for C for compound clip, so it's going to be a new compound clip, hit create. And then I'm just going to speed it up. So I'm going to select the compound clip and then I'm going to select Control R or Command R on Mac. It's going to bring up the speed control nodes. If I hold shift and scroll my mouse wheel and widen the clip out. And then I'm going to place my mouse right here on this little bar where it says com compound clip 5. I'm going to place it on the end. I'm going to click and then hold it down. And as I scroll in, you'll see it's now speeding up the clip. So now it's at 600 some percent and you see it happens really quick. I'm gonna hold Alt and scroll the mouse wheel again. Stretch out that clip and then I'm gonna speed up even further. So now we at what, 1600%? For the next effect, I got a bunch of stock clips lined up here. I'm gonna cut the media pool off. And you can see they different sizes. And so to address that, I'm actually gonna grab a adjustment clip and go to effects. 
I gotta save this favorite, so I'm gonna grab an adjustment clip, place it on top. I'm gonna stretch it out to fit the same length of the clips, and then I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. That way you can't see the other sides of the clips in the background. Now I'm gonna select my top clip, right click, and open it in Fusion. And basically what I'm gonna do is just create a rectangle mask. Select the media one, grab the rectangle mask, and I'm gonna resize the mask to fit around her eyes. Move this up on the Y axis. Now that I got that just there, I'm gonna add a little bit of softness to the edge, and then I'm gonna go back to the edit page. Now, of course, my clips don't line up all that well. So they're just random clips. So you wanna, if you can pre-plan, you wanna make sure the your subjects kind of line up a little bit, a lot better than what mine are. And so basically what I'm gonna do, take this top clip, I'm gonna move it up on the Y axis on the position, then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And just basically wanna line it up over our eyes. So I'm gonna uh, move this on the position of X. I'm just gonna line up over our eyes. There's a play. We got that mask going, then I let it play for a little while. Get about here, I'll split the clip. I'm gonna disable this one to get rid of that mask. And I have a keyboard shortcut for Y to open in Fusion, so I hit Y on my keyboard, open up that clip, and I repeat the process. I'll bring in a rectangle mask. This time I'm gonna select, make it around her mouth. So resize this. Oop. I'm gonna grab this little center point here and move it around her mouth. Add a little bit of soft edge. Then go back to my, go back to my edit page. And from here, I'm just gonna reposition it just a little bit to line up with the next clip. And since it's so much bigger, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, kind of make it a little smaller. And it don't exactly have to line up. You can just leave it big like that if you want to. So now I got the eyes, the mouth, go a little bit further. Split the clip again. Uh, disable the rest of that. Then on this clip, I hit Y. Bring in another mask and let's go around his nose. So now back on the edit page, I'm just gonna move this position over and then I zoom in a little bit and bring it back down on the Y axis. That's good enough there. And then just repeat the process. Now I can go back to a previous clip. I'm gonna split the clip there and then hit D to re-enable. Then I can reposition that for this clip and then I can play a little bit further. Then split the clip again, hit D to re-enable and her mouth is out of position. So I'm just gonna like basically put it around the chin. So we want to, I can just have a little mask kind of pop in from there. And then I can split these clips again and disable them. Then I take this clip, take it into Fusion, and create a new mask in Fusion, go back to the edit page, and have it line up over my final clip, or my next clip. Now once you're done with all your masks, it's gonna do the same thing we did in the previous effect. You're gonna select everything, right click, new compound clip, create. Now select the compound clip and hit Control or Command R, and then we're just gonna speed it up. And if you want to recreate these zoom through transitions, check out this video here and I'll see you next time.